Today I'm taking a look at the 50 amp hour Vatrer V-A-T-R-E-R battery, lithium iron phosphate, but this is 50 amp hours. It should be plenty for operating portable. I'm interested in portable operating, and a 50 amp hour battery is a good mix between getting that 100 amp hours and a 20 amp hour battery that might get you through an operation. So the company Vatrer, V-A-T-R-E-R is how it's spelled, sent me this battery, the 50 amp hour battery, for review to show you a use case of how I would use a battery like this. Personally, I think 50 amp hours is a great size battery for portable operating. And judging by the case here, this isn't like your normal hollow style batteries. This thing feels like it's ready to go. This battery claims to have a low temperature cutoff sensor in here. We'll see if that's something that we can test without tearing the battery apart. The model for this battery is LM1250, Lima Mic 1250. This is a 50 amp hour battery, so a 50 amp current draw on this battery, full capacity, a 1C rating, would give you one hour max. I'm gonna test this out with one of my radios to see how much current we're drawing. It'll give you an idea how long this battery would last out in the field. Typically a battery like this, even the bigger batteries, recommend charging at a slower rate. A recommended charge rate is 20 amps. Although the manual does say you can charge this at 50 amps, I am pretty sure that if you want this battery to last longer, you want to charge it at a slower rate. The slower rate, the better for longevity of your battery. I use my Victron 17 slash 6 amp hour charger, so I charge this at 17 amp hours to get this thing topped off. Now we're ready to go. Now if you haven't heard this enough, always fuse your connections at the terminals before you hook your radio gear up so that you'll protect the battery from some catastrophe that could happen if it goes wrong. This is how I generally will start off a battery connection because it gives me flexibility to add solar panels, put a splitter on, add a radio, or other accessories. I want to see what the draw is on a couple of different power levels. I'm using the TS480 in the shack and I'm using 200 watts using a CW carrier. And the current draw here is 32 amps. Now I drop the power down to 100 watts to see what the draw is there. And you can see that the current draw is 24 amps. So it's still well within the 50 amp hour battery rating. Something more practical if you're on parks in the air or you're just planning a low power trip while you're out activating, 50 watts. Now 50 watts, that's something that's more common that you and I are gonna do on an activation or an outing instead of using full power, normally to conserve battery power. So running 50 watts with a CW carrier, that's drawing 17 amps. I really wanna try out this new battery on this activation. We're gonna give that a try because it's a 50 amp hour battery and it has a 50 amp max current draw, which is gonna be perfect for using my TS480 because it takes 45 amps worth of draw when you're using a power supply. So this little battery here is what's going to run part of the activation. I probably can't run the entire contest with it, but we're gonna give it a shot and see how well it works, or if it just doesn't handle the load under high power. I've got a splitter inside to join this to it so I can get both power supplies from the radio into this. And this 10 gauge wire is thick enough to handle the amp draw from the radio. Now this battery is lightweight, light enough for me to carry like this. This makes it really valuable and I think useful for doing an activation, have enough power, enough amp capacity to last for parks on the air or something like that. 7 QP, Kilo 7, Sierra Whiskey. Now for this test, I'm out operating at my 7 QP uh, QSO party, which is like your state QSO party, but for us it's the seventh area. Now I'm operating sideband, so I'm using my CQ calls as the example, and I'm doing this at 100 watts. CQ, 7 QP, Kilo 7, Sierra Whiskey. So I ran this battery for four hours during the contest, calling CQ and making all the exchanges. It's probably about 50% duty cycle, if that. And the voltage on the meter shows, after four hours, 13.8 volts. Now, using the battery voltage chart, this should be about 50% capacity if you were to look at the battery. After four hours of working the contest, calling CQ and doing the exchanges, when the battery's in use, you're transmitting and then you stop transmitting, you don't get a resting voltage. So this is just an idea of where the battery stands. So while transmitting, the battery goes down to the 13 volts. That's still good for the radio. The radio likes to see that. So that just means that the battery sag is not sufficient enough to impact the radio performance. I pulled the battery at the four hour mark because I needed to run additional radio tests on different batteries that I have in my camper. I have a 100 amp hour battery to test and my trailer 200 amp hour battery. Got the generator out here. 
um, with the propane tank for it. I have about 30 feet of extension and that's gonna get me back to the camper. I did bring a generator so I could run my two power supplies. I brought those from the shack that would run the TS-480. It requires two power supplies. But I had a problem with the voltage on one of the power supplies, so the radio just did not like that. So I had to stop using it and just do battery only. Operating with a battery for four hours was a good insight for me to know how the battery performed. Now the real answer for how much battery I actually used was when I returned home and I charged the battery back up with my Victron controller, and I got to look at the app to see how much got put back into the battery. And I was really surprised. I only used 13.7 amp hours of my 50 amp hour battery. That means I really only used 25% of the battery. The results tell me that I could have operated the radio for 16 hours nonstop until the battery would be depleted. This is really good mileage, I think, for a 12 pound battery, which is really light. So if you're thinking about getting a lithium iron phosphate battery, or you're just looking to get into your first battery for portable operating, this battery checks off a lot of boxes for me. Now, if you're activating a parks on the air or, or just casually out operating, there'd be no reason to bring a generator or even hook up solar panels. And quite frankly, I think sometimes I just want to take less stuff. I did not get to test the cold temp sensor because the battery's small enough. I don't plan on leaving the battery outside in the winter. And if it's 32 degrees outside or, or colder, you're not going to find me outside operating. With a 50 amp hour battery like this, you could run a radio, an LED light, a tuner, maybe some other accessories, even charge your cell phone for blogging, for a weekend camping or a day trip. For me, more power is always better. Thanks, Vatra, for sending out this battery for me to see how well it would work in a ham radio environment. This is how I would use that battery. I give your battery a thumbs up. The price is reasonable, the capacity is really good at 50 amp hours, and it's compact, lightweight, and waterproof. Check out the link in the description below to learn more about those batteries. Now stick around and check out one of these videos right here, and I'll see you over there.